What's up folks? Man, I want to talk to you guys about something that I'm really excited. You've seen me fish this a lot in my videos and I just feel like I really need to dive into it a little bit and share some of what I've learned about it. It's the new uh, Cumberland Pro Underspin. And just an underspin in general, it's a really good bait starting in the fall. It runs all the way through the winter. And there's some specific times throughout the summer where you can catch those fish. Basically, anytime the bass are relating to anytime the bass are relating to shad, that underspin is going to come into play. It's really good in the post spawn too when the fish pull out and they get offshore. You can pick up a lot of fish doing that. So let me just talk a little bit about some of the baits I use, the sizes, the colors, and the way I work this thing. The old Cumberland Pro underspin does it again. Man, I had to come down here and fish for fun here the last couple minutes of the day. <laughs> these are killer. If you haven't tried these, you need to try the underspin. Um, this is the Cumberland Pro underspin. I like this white with the gold blade on these overcast days and they got these on tackle warehouse right now they just put them on there so go get some of these trust me they're great for fall winter and post spawn This is fun. Man, I love catching like this. Absolutely love it. It's nice, fun fighting fish. Get them when they're schooled up around the shad. Is it's a good time. It is a good time. Just simple. Slow roll that sucker. Just kind of ticking the bottom. Let it get up there about two or three feet off the bottom. Just keep it slow and low. This is fun. So the underspin is just one of these great little finesse swim bait things that really catches bass. Um, let this guy go here. It works great all year long, but it seems like in the fall, in the winter, and then in the post spawn when the fish are done spawning and they start pulling out to these deeper deeper points and structure it really really shines you can have some really good days there for a couple weeks but let me let me uh i showed you this underspin let me show you some of the different colors and blade combinations that cumberland pro has in this and then i'll talk about some of the little swim baits that i like to rig up on this and then a couple different ways to work it my equipment that kind of stuff because i think you guys are going to want to get some of these if you don't already fish them they're really good fish catchers and they do catch some big fish too 
they were good on stripers too. You know, Cumberland Pro's got several good colors and sizes in this underspin. They've got a quarter ounce, they've got three eighths, and they've got a half ounce. And I usually stick with that three eighths ounce. It seems to be kind of multi-purpose. If I was to make any adjustment, I would probably go to the quarter ounce because I think you can still get this three eighths ounce down there in that 20 foot zone if you need to by slow rolling it. So it's kind of a multi-purpose head, but if I'm going, if I'm fishing really shallow, um, if the bait's really high up in the water column and I, need, I still need to reel it really slow, then I will bump up or down to a quarter ounce. This by all means has been my best color. This is a white chartreuse with a gold blade. It's got that little bit of chartreuse there on the nose. Excellent bait. You know, this has got a really stout gammy hook. I think it's a three eye. It's really sharp. It's got sample swivels on it. Nice quality blades on it. Um, the, some of the other colors. Let me show you some of the other colors they have. They've got a bluegills color. You know, it's kind of a green pumpkinish with a gold blade. And I haven't thrown that around, but if you're primary for, primary forage is bluegill you know like in the summertime a lot of times these bluff walls and stuff they have shade on them and you'll see these bluegills suspended up high in the water column that is probably a scenario where you could pick out that um bluegills underspin and toss that thing around i'd probably go with a quarter ounce on that one but anytime they're relating to the bluegill the bluegill is going to be a good color and you're going to put you know obviously some kind of green pumpkin or so swim bait on there another color that they have is called the plum crazy and it's kind of a, well, it's a plum color. Uh, let me pull one of these out for you, let you look at it. And this is a quarter ounce. I'll show you the quarter ounce versus the three eighths ounce. Yeah, that's the plum crazy right there. So this is a quarter ounce. And then here is your white chartreuse. That's the three eighths. So there's a pretty big difference. You know, another good thing about this underspin that I like is it's got that blunt nose and it kind of comes through cover. You know, I've talked about this before, but it's real key to have a long wire right there to get this blade away from the swim bait body because if this blade hits the body it's not going to rotate it's going to cause you a lot of problems i've ran into that with several different underspins i got a lot of trash underspins but i'm just sharing this one with you because i've been fishing it around and i really think it's worth it um the other color i don't have it it's kind of a smoke shad color and then they've got the same white it's got no chartreuse let me pull it out for you trying to keep from pulling all these out because I don't want them all over the place but it's just a straight white no chartreuse on the nose and it's got a silver blade this is probably be this will probably be my second favorite color um, like I said the gold blade is real multi-purpose if you want a little more flash that silver blade's going to come into play Fat fish. Really fat fish. Good stuff. Let me talk just a little bit about a few of the baits I like to throw on it, and I'll get into my equipment and line real quick. Um, I've been throwing this Kitek. This is a swing impact. It's not the fat, it's the regular one. It's a lot skinnier. This is a four inch version. And I believe the color is called white ice. No, sight flash, I'm sorry called sight flash this has been really good for me some of the other ones i like to throw as far as the paddle tail i like the little dipper man this this is a great quality plastic um, use it as a swim bait trailer swim jig trailer um just all around good little swim bait it's a three inch and this is called blue pearl shad this is my go-to color secondary color is going to be the shiner or I like that Gunnersville Shad. Shiner's got that green back. It's still kind of got that pearly look. And then if I need to bump up just a little bit, put something a little bit bigger, I like the Strike King Swimming Caffeine Shad. Um, I'll show you what that one looks like. It's a little bit bigger bait. 
you know, this is more of a finesse type of underspin. Of course, you know, you can go big on this and, and you can do the Texas rig underspin like with the flashy swimmer, but I'm just talking about open jig head for this deal here. So similar size length, but this is just a little bit fatter. This is um, smoke shad. This is a great color. These work good on Alabama rigs too. Now, sometimes they don't want the paddle tail. For some reason, I don't exactly know why, and that's what I'm gonna go with this uh, fluke, just the super fluke. And albino is the color that I always go to. I don't play around with the colors a whole heck of a lot to keep it pretty simple. Just a standard salty fluke. It's a bad thing about these packages, the tails get all warped. You can kinda, you can heat these things up, but they're usually, they're so cheap, I just kinda go through and pull out the bad ones and keep the good ones. But albino colored salty fluke, or albino colored salty super fluke um, is the other one I will go to. And you kinda gotta play around with it. If you think you're a round fish, you know you're a round fish. You know, you're, the way to do this is to side scan and find your bait balls and see um, the bass down there that are relating to them. You wanna make your cast, count down to those fish. And I typically try to try to keep it above their head. You know, and I'm visualizing this bait coming about a foot or two above their head because I think they like to feed up when they're out there suspended. Um, so you're gonna make your cast, a long cast. You're gonna kind of give us some slack, count it down to whatever you think. You know, if you think they're down on the bottom, if you're seeing them on the bottom, then let it fall all the way to the bottom and just make a slow retrieve. When you're working this underspin, First thing to do is locate an area that's got shad and bass, obviously. And it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're just making a cast. I give it slack line, I let it sink to the bottom. And then I just start reeling it real slow. I got a seven to one gear ratio reel. So I'm just reeling it real slow. And you're just, the, the bait's just kind of a foot or so above the bottom. And when you, you'll feel a little tick and it'll load up and it's just a sweep set. You know, you don't have to jack them or anything. You just kind of pull into them and start reeling and that hook just penetrates. It's kind of a medium wire hook. It's a nice strong hook, gammy, super sharp. So it just penetrates and it's all just about just sweeping and reeling and that hook's gonna dig right in. So let me make a cast and I'll kind of show you what I'm doing. Just make a long cast out there and just give it some slack and let it fall down. And just watch your line, still falling, still falling. Okay, it's on the bottom, so this, I'm just gonna start my retrieve. Really slow, real handle. Really slow turn to the reel. When they bite, you'll just feel a little tick. I've already caught several out here. I don't know if I'll get any more bites. Just a little tick is all you're feeling for. I'm bumping the bottom right now. Coming off that point. See how slow I'm rolling my handle? Real slow, and you can even slow it down. You really can't go too slow on this. That's it, it's that easy. You can pop it a little bit, stroke it a little bit, but I normally just have like a, just a slow, steady reel. And I will, I will slow the handle down a little bit, speed it back up, maybe give it a little twitch, but it's pretty straightforward. As far as line, I like 15 pound line, 12 to 15, you know, some people use 12 and that's awesome. I mean, um, but I've got this rod that I use for a lot of different techniques. So 15 is kind of all around. Um, seven foot, medium heavy. This is a quantum smoke rod. You know, you want to, you want kind of a soft tip. You know, you could even go with a medium that's a little bit of a heavier medium, but it's real, real important to have a little bit of a tip. Uh, seven to one gear ratio reel, no secret there. And it's kind of a, you know, you make your cast and you're, you're reeling in and you'll feel a little tick or a lot of times the, the bait will just kind of go away. They, you know, I think they come up behind it and just grab it and it just gets really, really light. And it's just a sweep set. You just kind of pull to the side and just start reeling into them. This hook is perfect. It's a three-out hook and it gets them right where it's supposed to.
You get the point. <laughs> it's a deadly little bait. It works great in all these little southern Illinois lakes. And those lakes in Missouri and other parts of the country. It's killer, killer bait. So guys, go out there, give the underspin a try. I just, I wanted to share that with you because I, right now is a great time to start learning how to fish the underspin, but it's all about just going out there, locating shad, locating bass that are relating to shad, put that thing in your hand, work with it practice it i mean if i had to get one color if you just want to get one color um i'd go with that white with that little chartreuse and the gold blade you can get all this stuff at tackle warehouse um all the cumberland pro stuff is up and running now and pick you up a couple packs of swim baits um definitely want to get those uh kitech swing impacts and some of the little dippers and just keep it simple get you some flukes too you know maybe three different baits you can try them around um shad colors predominantly shad colors that's i don't mess with anything else i just keep it keep it looking like a shad because that's what they're feeding on right now um and typically it's just a slow retrieve and i will kind of slow the handle down a little bit i maybe speed it up a little bit i might put a little bit of english on there just kind of give it a little rod shake or something like that and as you get closer to the boat you can actually stop reeling and let it kind of pendulum down and get closer back to the bottom and start to retrieve again and you can stroke that thing too. Um, sometimes they want it popped up off the bottom, so you're gonna make your cast, let it sink to the bottom. And there's two ways two ways to do the stroking thing. You can do, give it like three or four real quick real handle turns. That makes that bait jump up off the bottom, or you can just actually lift your rod, pop it up that way. And sometimes um, they will want one over the other. You don't wanna get too crazy with it. It's just kind of little subtle jerks. But so straight retrieve or the stroking, Go out there and play with this. Get some bites. Please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like if you appreciate my content. Um, leave some comments. Let me know what you think about this. If you got some other underspins out there that you have confidence in, and also some other baits, you know, and you have some swim baits that you've tried that you think will oh, outproduce some of these other ones. The um, Strut King, I think it's the uh, Rage Swimmer, you know, that 3.5. Um, and then the, the Kitek 3.3 uh, or the 2.8. 2.8 might be too small it might blow it out but 3.3 uh fat impact swing impact is, is another one that i've thrown around on it you know something i'll do in an area where i've been getting bites like this throwing that underspin these fish have kind of shut off i think they've they've moved out a little bit off this point but i will still go back through there with something really small like a shaky head or this is just a 3 8 ounce finesse football jig by Cumberland Pro with a little zoom speed crawl, just green pumpkin zoom speed crawl. And I'll put a little chartreuse dye on there. But before I leave an area where I've caught several fish like that, I'll definitely go back through it with something slow and drag it on the bottom. Because a lot of times those fish are sitting underneath those balls of bait on the bottom and you can pick up a few more bites by doing that. But this is a good little jig, real finessey. go from the pro finesse jig in the mouth so you should always go back through that area with uh, something on the bottom you know a shaky head is one is something that I use a lot or just a little finesse jig you usually pick up a few more bites by doing that um, that's a nice fish nice solid fish
Look at that, guys. <laughs> Got to clean up shop with a jig. He ate that thing. You know something I always do after I've caught some fish, suspended fish, and I'm around bait fish, is I'll go back through that same area. After they've shut off, you know, I made several casts with that underspin, and they kind of shut off. This is a that little 3 8 ounce Cumberland Pro Finesse football jig with a little zoom speed crawl on there with some shark trees on there. Nice little, I don't know what the color is. It's got some kind of purplish blue in there. It's mostly green pumpkin base or whatever, but nice solid fish. But I always go back through an area with a shaky head or a small finesse jig after I've caught a bunch of fish, these schooling fish, suspended fish, and I'll drag it real slow on the bottom because those fish are down there on the bottom underneath those bait balls and eventually they'll shut off. You can throw a spoon or something else in there, um, a little pro spin, whatever, but I always go back and drag something on the bottom and you usually will pick up a few extra bites and that's exactly what happened here. That's a nice one. <laughs> wow. Cool, let this guy go. Hey, subscribe to the channel if you have not. Please share it on social media. Hit the little bell. Leave some comments too. That really helps the channel. Um, YouTube's algorithm is all about comments. And the more times you leave a comment, the better it off I do. It helps the channel. Even if it's something like, hey, or thank you, or your video sucks, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just something um, that really helps the channel grow. So appreciate you guys for coming along on this little underspin slash football head adventure. Till next time. I got a real bad habit of just pulling the fish with the line. That's stupid. Don't do that. Don't do that. <sighs> Had to try it.